Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend, and welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so very much for letting us be a part of your day today. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to 2 Peter chapter 3, if it is at all possible. Right now, get out your own copy of the Word of God and join me there, 2 Peter chapter 3. We begin to dip our toes into the waters here of chapter 3 as we are walking through the book of 2 Peter, verse by verse, a truth by truth. While you're getting your Bible, also get something on which you can jot some notes. I've got some points of outline to give to you. I think they'll be important to you. So get that piece of paper and pen handy. Also, I've got a gospel tract here in my hand. I want to share that with you as well. By the way, as you're listening to the program, more than likely I'm in my car traveling home from Troy, Ohio, where yesterday I had the great privilege of opening the Word of God and preaching the gospel and sharing the ministry of what God is doing here at Bible Tracks Incorporated with the folk at the Troy Baptist Temple. That local church has stood by us with prayer and support for many, many years. I'm so very grateful for that local church. And by the way, if you would like us to come and share the ministry of Bible Tracks at your local church, we would love to do that as well. Now, before I read the portion of Scripture here before us, and before I talk about gospel tracts, let me lead into our Bible study this way. One of the questions my wife and I always ask each other pretty much first thing every morning is this, how did you sleep last night? That question is probably being asked in virtually every household across the world, and I don't think you're surprised by the question. There are times when, in the middle of a really good sleep that I'm having, my wife shakes me awake because she thinks she's heard something. Well, when she does that, I am not allowed to merely lay in the bed and listen for a few minutes. My wife expects me to get up and walk through the house checking on all the doors and windows and so on. She has awakened me with the expectation that I will act, that I will do something. And I think you get the picture here, and you understand my wife's reasons for shaking me awake. Well, if you understand my story here, then you're ready to understand the opening verse of 2 Peter chapter 3. So stay tuned and get ready to be, well, shaken this morning. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. It's an evangelism tool. We have over 40 different gospel tracts. The one in my hand right now is designed specifically to be used by a soul winner, to be used by somebody trying to share the gospel eyeball to eyeball with a lost person. There are no paragraphs of storytelling here. It's entitled, It's Free, and on the front cover, there's a wallet with credit cards sticking out of it. But when you open the gospel tract, it's simply Bible verses. On the left-hand side, it asks, what is free? And then it answers the question, salvation is free. And there are five Bible verses that emphasize that salvation is a gift from God. As the track is open on the right-hand side, the question asks, where can I find it? Where can I find this free gift? It answers the question with these words, in God's 
risen son. And then there are four Bible verses that pointedly say that our salvation is in a person, not in a ceremony, not in a church, not in giving, not in good works. It's in the person of Jesus Christ. And the back panel simply tells the person how to take the step of asking Jesus Christ to be their Savior. It is a tremendous help because you don't need to have even your open Bible in front of you, although I think that's great and best, but often we don't have our Bible, even our New Testament with us. This gospel track gives you everything you need to lead a soul to Christ right here, and the person can follow along with you, and you can give it to them afterward. Please, at the end of the program, my announcer will come back on and give you ways to contact us. Do that. Let us send you a free sample packet, which contains one each of all of our Bible tracks, including this one. It is is free. Well, 2 Peter chapter 3 opens with these words. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Stop, please, right there. We begin today our seventh week here in the study of the book of Second Peter, and I hope you have been able to value this little book more and more, and I'll be learning a thing or two as we go through it here. Now, let me do a real quick, broad view of the whole book, hopefully to try to tie together some things here in a broad view. I have a one-word title that I have given to each one of the chapters here in the book. Chapter 1, my word is holiness, holiness. In chapter 1, the apostle Peter will soon die, and he wants to make a final appeal to believers that they will continue to grow in the Lord, and he actually wants to be remembered for making this challenge over and over again. My word for chapter 2 is the word heresy heresy. In chapter 2, Peter warns of coming false teachers, and he wants us to not only know that they'll be present, but he wants us to know how to spot them. And then my word for chapter 3 here is the word hope. After warning us of the coming of false teachers, or uh, we've been using the word apostates, we started there in chapter 2, Peter's going to give some more details about these false teachers here in the opening part of chapter 3, but then he's going to say, let's continue to grow in the Lord even in the midst of this theological error that's being spread. The hope of Peter that he talks about here is based upon three things. They are found in the second half of chapter three. The three things are these. Number one, we have a reliable prophecies concerning the future. Then we have number two, a recognized scriptures. And number three, we have the right mindset. With those three things in mind, we can be growing saints in the middle of whatever era we are in. Now, come back here to verse 1 of chapter 3. Again, it says this, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Peter was writing this book of 2 Peter for the very same basic reason he wrote the book of 1 Peter. He wants to stir up or he wants to arouse from sleep the people that belong to God. As my wife awakens me and expects me to go into action, so Peter desires that God's people, the saints, be awakened to danger and begin to act, to begin to do something. It's not enough to know that somebody might be breaking into your house. You had better get up and do something. If you are taking notes, here are three things I'll ask you to jot down based upon First, Second Peter chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. The first one is this. The word is point. What is the point of the book? Number two, the word is purity, the purity of our minds. And then thirdly, the word is provision, the provision of our Bible. Now, let me take them one at a time. The point of the book here of 2 Peter, we've already stated here today. Peter wants believers to be awakened about the idea that false teachers are around. Uh, we got to be alert to them, know who they are, and then to start taking action in accordance with the fact that they exist. 
But then let's come to my second word here. The word is purity. Verse 1 talks about the purity of our minds. Now notice, Peter states that this is an existing fact. He doesn't say, I'm writing that you might develop pure minds. I'm writing to you because we have pure minds. Now, let me ask you, do you think that you have a pure mind? Well, normally, when you and I talk about a pure mind, we're thinking about having a mind that's not focused, not thinking about sinful stuff, but our mind is focused on godly stuff. Things like, well, what Philippians 4 verse 8 talks about whatsoever things are true and honest and so on. Think on those things, that verse there. When we think of a pure mind, we think of having a mind that's focused on things of God. But the word pure here comes from a Greek word, which literally means to judge by sunlight. In the Bible era, women would go to the market to buy a new jar, a new earthen jar. But before purchasing the jar, she would hold it up to the sunlight. The sunlight would reveal if there were any cracks in the jar, which the seller had tried to cover over with wax and with paint. The woman had the ability to evaluate the jar based upon the power of the sunlight. Well, dear brother and sister, you and I have the same ability when it comes to spotting false teachers and false teaching. While a woman holds the jar up to sunlight, verse 2 here of 2 Peter chapter 3 tells us that we have God's sure word. Our Bible is the sunlight which we use to detect truth and error when somebody is teaching. That's the provision, that third word beginning with the letter P I gave today in my outline. God's provided us with the scriptures. I cannot, I cannot urge you strongly enough how that you and I need to be in our Bibles each and every day. Don't only read the easy parts of the Bible, like the Gospels. I love reading the Gospels. And please don't stop reading the Gospels. But also, read those parts of Scripture that require you to stop and ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten your mind on what is being said and what it means. Read your Bible looking for new facts and old facts on, number one, who God is, and number two, what is God like? If we will just get our lives anchored in who God is and the characteristics about him, it's amazing the error that we will not be drawn into. Then keep a piece of paper in your Bible on which you keep a running list of facts about God. And let me ask you to do one more thing. I encourage you to find a friend with whom you can share some of the things you're finding in your word in the Bible. That's what the Bible calls edifying one another. Dear child of God, we are to be alert to error. It's out there. Just like the woman holds up the jar to the light, we are to hold up the teaching that we get, even from this radio program, hold it up to the light of the Word of God and say, is there any cracks in it? Is there some flaw in it? If we find a flaw in the teaching, we've got to note that and say, God's Word says otherwise. Let's base what we hold our truth on to the Word of God. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.